What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the most difficult to understand genetics in the boa world, and that's the Paradigm Parahet Complex. This beautiful boa I have in my hand is a Paradigm Scoria that's 100% het for blood. Now, if you look at it, it's not a normal Scoria. It's a visually different looking animal. Essentially, a Paradigm is a T-positive looking animal now what makes that is it is 100% het for sharp albino and 100% het for boa woman caramel. Sharp albino is a tyrosinase negative or a T negative albino. Boa woman caramel is a tyrosinase positive or a T positive albino. Now tyrosine reacts with melanin and creates different color pigments in our body. So a T negative has no tyrosine and therefore it has lack of color which creates that typical albino that you would think of. Tyrosinase positive is what we refer to in reptiles as T positive just reacts with a little bit of melanin and creates this T-positive looking animal, which is kind of has some look to it, but it doesn't have the full pigment that a normal snake would look like, but it also doesn't reduce all that melanin like a T-negative or a sharp albino would. So when you take a sharp albino and you breed it with a visual bow woman caramel albino, you create a double head. And the interesting unique thing about sharp albino when bred to a bow woman caramel is those two hats are allelic. So they work on the same allele. And when that happens, they create what we call a paradigm boa, a visual T positive looking boa. So stick with me because this is where a lot of people get confused. This paradigm parahead complex is really simple, but there's nothing good out there for a resource that helps you understand and learn exactly what's happening here. So I hope you guys can watch this video, get your notebooks ready because it's something you're gonna wanna write down as I go but get your notebooks ready as this is gonna be something that you really need to digest, understand, and once you get it, you get it. And you're gonna to wanna to buy one of these at the end of the video, or at least at some point, if you're gonna be a boa breeder, you're gonna want one of these in your group. So I think most people understand the parahet. Parahet, take a sharp albino, boa woman caramel, breed it together, get a visual animal that's a parahet. The interesting thing where they kind of lose the understanding is that these are allelic. So if I took a visual blood and bred it to an anatheristic animal, I'm gonna make a double het. And that double het is not visual because they're not working on the same allele, like a paradigm is. If I take this double het blood anery and I breed it to a normal, I'm gonna get 50% het blood, 50% het anery babies. That's because they're not on the same allele. Because a paradigm is working on the same allele, it's a very different type of breeding is if I take that paradigm and I breed it to a normal, that 100% het sharp and the 100% het bow woman caramel, they break apart and they pass the genetics down as in a linear fashion. It almost works like a super form of uh, incomplete dominant. Now, if you don't understand genetics and you don't understand what I'm talking about, I did a whole genetics 101. Make sure you go and watch that video. Take the notebook out as well because it's a really complicated thing to understand, but once you get it, you get it. If I were to breed a paradigm to a normal, I will get 100% het sharp albinos and 100% het bow woman caramels. I will, in theory, get no normals or no possible hets. That's where people get lost. That's exactly what a parahet is. Is I take a paradigm and I breed it to a normal, I'm gonna make parahets. And a parahet means that it is either 100% het bow woman caramel or 100% het sharp albino. We won't know until we breed that. And that's where this gets really fun and really cool is just thinking what we can do with these animals. I'm gonna put this one back so I can stay focused on explaining this last piece and you guys can fully understand what's going on at the end of this video. Talking about the genetics and where this can go and why it's important to understand what these are is because you can do some really cool stuff with this. Years ago, I made a video on hypomotley and why I think it's such a powerful genetic. It's because it's an allelic trait. You take a hypo, you take a motley, they work on the same allele. When you breed that to a normal, half the babies become hypo and half the babies become motley. You cannot get another hypo motley by taking a hypo motley and breeding it to a normal. That's different than let's say a hypo jungle. When I take a hypo jungle and I breed it to a normal, I'm gonna make hypos, jungles, hypo jungles, and normals. It's because they work like a traditional punnet square. Allelic animals do not follow that same punnet square because they are essentially like an incomplete dominant, like the super form of it. They break themselves apart, so there's one piece of the genetic tree that always passes down to its babies, as opposed to those double hets that we talked about, the double het blood anatheristic or a hypo jungle, they work differently than that. Let's say I was gonna take a paradigm boa and I was gonna breed it to something. What would I do? 
I could breed this to a Boa Woman Caramel. I could breed it to a Sharp Albino. I could breed it to another Paradigm. Or I could breed it to a Parahent. The importance of having these in your group and why I kind of transitioned from Cal Albino to Sharp Albino is I have so much more variety and so many more options I can go in. Cal Albino, it's an albino. It works like a simple recessive and there's nowhere else to go with it other than Cal Albino. I love Cal Albino and I still have it, but Sharp Albino gives me a lot more possibilities of I can have one animal that can give me four or five different types of snakes because I just need to reorganize a little bit. And what I like when I see babies getting born is a very diverse litter. So if I were to take a paradigm and breed it to a sharp albino, I'm going to get really cool stuff. Everything in there is going to be valuable and some of it's going to be cutting edge because a lot of people avoided this genetic due to a lack of understanding of what it is, myself included, for a long time. The last piece of the paradigm parahet complex we're going to talk about is a paraglow. All a paraglow is, is a paradigm with hypo. It's no different than a sun glow. It's you are got to view the paradigm almost like it's its own albino. And then you throw a hypo into it, now you have a paraglow. The biggest difference between them, which I can't drive home enough, is the way the genetics work. When you breed the paraglow to a normal, they're going to be making parahats. And the hypo of the paraglow works just like it would always work. Half the babies will be hypo, half the babies will be normals. The only difference is that those babies are going to be parahats, which means they're either sharp albino or Boa Woman Carmo. So you're going to get hypo that are 100% het sharp albino or hypo that are 100% het Boa Woman Carmo or normals that are het sharp albino, het Boa Woman Carmo. But you won't know we call them parahats. Let me know in the comments if this video helped. And until next video, let's keep it moving.